Yo, hello, let's go with the show. Hi, it's Anfa from anfamusic.com. Welcome to another episode of LZW, which stands for LMMS and Zunet SubFX Watch and Learn. In this episode, I'm gonna be covering symbols, synthesizing symbols like crash and ride. Yep, that's right. Uh, we can listen to what these sounds are gonna be. Something like that. Or this. Or that. Or maybe even this. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Perfect. So let's kick it off. So in case you don't know what a symbol is, I'm oh, sorry for this distortion. Uh, in case you don't know what a symbol is, I'm gonna draw you a picture. Uh, it generally starts with something like that. And then it goes something like this. Something like this. Yeah, it's something like that. And it's all made of, mm, well, I don't know how this metal is called. And I've got some little soft teeth here and a little bolt here to tie it up and a little rod there. Yeah, and this is freaking symbol, if you know what I mean. Oh, crap, I'm not a good drawer with the mouse. Okay, so, um, as you might remember, last time we covered hi-hat, and for hi-hat we can use white noise. But white noise is, uh, you know, distributing energy all over the spectrum equally. So if we have a decibels, which is energy or sound volume, and hertz, okay, I should call this F and I don't know what, but you know, white noise is something like this. You know, it's 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 going to be a straight line, and all this is sound energy all here. However, with symbols, it's not like that. It's more like a very, very, very more, very, very much tiny peaks in frequencies that um, create something that is almost a noise, but it's not a noise. And noise doesn't really um, reproduce what a, a symbol sound is very well. And I was reading an article on Sound on Sound by uh, Gordon Wright, who reads a great series of uh, uh, articles called Synth Secrets. And I say totally go check it out because it's worth the read. He, <laughs> he really um, covers some very interesting aspects of sound synthesis and does it extremely well with good information, background, um, scientific background and sense of humor. So that's a little commercial, actually non-commercial commercial. But back to the symbol. Well, I'm not going to be talking any much more. Let's just go get synthesizing. Here's the session as we left it last time. As you can see, we can kick snare, hi-hats, four hi-hats. Uh, I'm going to quickly add a simple instrument and assign it to an FX channel, just to not bore you with this. Surprise, I've got two of them, ride and crash. Well, there are two of them. And how do they differ? Basically, ride symbol is larger and played more often, like a part of the beat, while crash symbol is smaller, has a brighter tone, and is used to attenuate, attenuate, attenuate? No, attenuate. Um, add um, importance to uh, quitting a break in a drum beat. Like you go on a ride, and then you go on the crash. So that's just an example. Yep, just. Let's begin with the right symbol. I'm going to enter four notes like we do with everything. Open its interface of Zenitsub FX. 
And what I wanted to do is just follow a recipe and not listen at all to what I'm doing. This is going to be a very different approach that we had earlier when we did something, listened to it, did something, listened to it. And applied everything as we go. Now I'm going to do something very different. And this is how what I learned from Gordon Wright's um, articles. I wanted to find out how the sound of uh, ride or crash symbol was done in the old TR-909 Roland synthesizer drum machine. And I read about a pack of square waves that were tuned, sorry, that were tuned to different frequencies mm. and they were put together. Maybe I'll draw it. We had a few oscillators. An oscillator generates waveform. So we have, like, say this. It was actually six of them. So this times two. Okay. And they were put to a mixer. So we have six of them here and just one here. Mm. And then it was uh, split it with a filter, one high pass filter and one low pass filter. So it's again now it was mixed and it's slip split. And the higher, the higher part of the spectrum had an envelope, and the lower band of the spectrum had a longer envelope. Yeah, it should be much longer so we can see. Oh no. So the brighter parts were um, ad were attenuating more quickly than the, the, the darker tones of the, of the ride. And they were mixed together back. And there's the tone. So I'm going to try simulate this. It's actually pretty, pretty easy in, in SubFX. So we have the first. Um, first square wave. I'm gonna detune it three octaves down, then open use external one. That's a neat trick. You can select any of the previous waveforms or rather oscillators done. So now you can see this is this change button turned blue. And when I change this one and get back one voice, the first one also changes. Because now I'm just using, I'm using actually one um, oscillator for both voices. I'm going to disable this for now. I could just hit a clear button, but never mind. And now I'm going to do the same thing. Yep. And that was two octaves, three octaves, it would be two octaves and some detune here and some detune here and this one be one octave and some detune here and some detune here just randomly detuning these voices this will be nothing and a little bit here a little bit here i have eight of them and i'm going to use all of them that's a pretty nice exercise So I'm just going like this, switching to external one, detuning, moving along. Yep, and this should pretty do it. Oh, right. one more. Okay, so now we have eight square waves. I'm going to change their panning so they will create some serial field, not just total mono. It will be much more interesting to listen to if I just change this pan values left and right a bit here and there. And now I'm going to add envelopes to all these voices. So I'm enabling this, turning sustain all the way down, and I'm just going to enter free mode and disable the sustain. 
So we have 1.7. That's a little bit short for a ride, maybe three seconds. I don't know. It just, you know, it depends. It depends. And maybe this, I uh, don't know. Let's leave the stretch function on because we can play higher notes and we will get shorter symbol hits that can be useful. Okay, and I'm gonna be doing copy this, paste it here. Uh, no, okay, it was the eighth voice. Right, so I'm gonna be going the opposite way. Okay, I'm gonna paste this. Uh, I'm going from the highest voice to the lowest one. I'm going to paste the same envelope over and over and make it more and more longer, just longer. So the lower partials will have more time to develop. Oh, I didn't grab the right the right um, handle. Yeah, it's very interesting to just, you know, let it go and then give it a listen and think how it's possible to make sounds when you don't listen to what you're doing. Well, if you know what you're doing or have some recite, it it may work. Okay, so maybe I should make this a little bit longer. Maybe not so much. Okay, this is it. Now I have the final envelope of all of these. I'm going to do something to it too. So it would be, yeah, longer than anything else. Okay, now I'm going to open the Lopez filter. Uh, maybe just play one note. Three, two, one. <laughs> That's nice. It's better than I thought. It's gonna be. This is not bad for a totally randomly made uh, symbol. But what's not nice about it? Too dark. Or is it? Or it's disharmonic. Well, that's for sure. It should be. Mm, we could use a high pass filter, and this is what I often do. Make it a little bit shorter. Yeah, so that's the bass sound. Now, what can we do to make it more believable? Basically, add some reverb. And Mm. It's a good time to show you something new and uh, we haven't been talking about yet. You see we have these two buttons here, Kit, Edit and Effects. Actually every, every part has free effects slot in here, one, two, three, there are no more, that you can use just in this part. So when you're running out of the in insertion effects, when you have eight, eight of them, you can use this because you have some extra free effects per every instrument and that's something you want to have sometimes with really complicated patches. Maybe I'll just use a single hit, it's easier. Now the reverb is all wet, so we have all the only reverb. Maybe it's too dark, I brighten it up, cutting up, down, cutting sound low tones out with a hypes filter and 
letting some more high overtones through. We also release dampening, reduce dampening, which will also leave some more high frequency content. And now mix it with the original dry signal. That's not bad. Yeah, we could use some equalization to spot some problematic areas that we don't want. Some, for some reason, always one kilohertz rings in my patches. I don't know why. Another one. It wouldn't be a bad idea to add some low content to this. Get something painful out here. Yeah, we could dampen it slightly, and then with a high shell filter, get back some of this high, high-end <laughs> top frequency. Let's see how it would sound when we play it quieter. We could do something to change its tone while it's quieter. Mm, for example, we could make it darker when it's played softer. How to do that? Well, we have a few ways, but what I'm gonna do is increase the velocity sensing of the highest tones and make it slightly less sensitive as we go down so the lower voices will be louder than the Yeah, that's much brighter than this. This is a little bit more natural. When you hit something softly, you don't give it as much energy in the high frequency range. Okay, so this is our ride. All ride! It has... Okay, I haven't attached it to the... No, I had. But I made it inappropriately. Okay. Now, uh, how will it play with the rest of the beat? It could be playing somewhere higher. And we can change this uh, inside the Zenat sub effects or within the instrument window right here. You can see this blue. Uh, sorry it's green green square above the keyboard it's the basic note right now it's a note if we shift this an octave down the actual played notes will rise up listen <laughs> okay they won't because i'm doing this on a crash symbol instead of the right which is playing okay That's almost like a cowbell.
can also uh, change its pitch a little bit using this pitch knob. Let's hear it with the beat. Okay, this does it. Let's move on to the crash symbol. And now we will do it looking what we're doing. I mean, listening to what we're doing. Mm. I've been experimenting and uh, actually after making the initial um, blind patch using the square waves, I started doing it with pulse waves because they have more different harmonics and it's like more different content to to fill up the, the spectrum. So let's start with a new voice. This is gonna be our crash symbol. I'm gonna move pulse and then change it. And then add some other harmonic stuff so we can have more overtones brighter sound and stuff oh and let's make sure we where is that window we hear everything we do this now let's try go with some more with some more harmonic style. I'm going to change these a little bit. Oh, and the pan. You can copy and paste voices just like envelopes or filter settings. Maybe I'll make this one from scratch. You can hear the sine wave. Make something similar here.
Okay. Now. Now let's change this filter to a hypos filter. And, or maybe even the state variable of hypos filter. Make it very delicate. What I tend to do sometimes is I copy the whole thing Make this just the higher, highest possible band. And then I paste it to another voice. P, paste from clipboard. And then I use band pass filter. Yes, changes for some reason. And then, this is what we do. We have both of them. They are distorting a bit, so I need to turn them down. Now, add some reverb to master. And this could do our crash symbol. Let's see. Yeah, it could use some equalization for getting more defined sound. Maybe oh, there was something really loud. Oh yeah, this. I'm gonna cut this. I use a high shelf. Maybe turn it down. Something like that. Not the best I've ever done, but it'll do. Thanks for watching. See you next week when I will be doing what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna be doing. Oh yeah, Clang's metal percussion. We're gonna be using some filters to create um, specific funny resonances to emulate some cool metalish sounds of vibrating metal surfaces. Yeah, if you wanna see that, consider subscribing this channel and leave me some feedback. It's good to have some feedback from the people you're broadcasting to. All right. Thanks for watching and enjoy your symbols. Bye.